So this will be my breakdown and review of the event UFC 2. Um, this was a follow-up to UFC 1, and a few things you'll notice about this UFC event is that, one, it's probably the most important debut, and it's the debut of Big John McCarthy, one of the most important figures in all of MMA's history. Um, he's the reason for a lot of the rules, and probably the best draft ever in MMA's history. Very important man. Um, and then you'll also notice the absence of Ken Shamrock. Um, everyone was anticipating his return, maybe see him fight Hoist again, but nah, not this one. Uh, so, I'll probably do this in over four parts. In this part, I'll be doing the preliminary bouts. Um, 16 fighters, so it's eight fights in the preliminary bouts, just to see who makes it to the quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. Um, in the first fight was Scott Morris versus Sean uh, Doggerty, uh, Doggerty, quick guillotine, um, not much to say about this, uh, the first couple fights were fast, later on it, they got to longer fights. Uh, Patrick Smith versus Ray Wizard, this was the return of Patrick Smith, the guy who got heel hooked early by Ken Shamrock in the first round of the UFC 1 event. Um, he actually won this fight, and with a beautiful guillotine again. Um, so, that was nice. I wanted to see him again. We didn't really get to see what he could do, because he was matched up against Ken Shabrock in the opening round of UFC 1. Um, third fight was Johnny Rose versus David Levecki. Uh, pretty boring fight, because we were both stand-up fighters, um, and it went to the ground, so not a lot of them knew what to do, it was just mostly Johnny Rhodes um, trying to strike him from full guard, uh, I correct to finish by like DKO, but honestly I just wanted the fight to be over, it was a long, pretty long fight, 12 minutes, and not a lot of action, and because this is early rules, that means that it wasn't stood back up just so they could get the action going again, it was just basically full guard work, the entire fight. I don't recommend. I don't recommend watching the fight. Um, fourth fight was Frank Hamaker versus Thaddeus Luster. Um, this fight was interesting because there was a lot of submission attempts, a lot of Americana attempts, but they were pretty weak. They seemed pretty um, poor um, from Frank Hamaker. Guy does Sambo, but apparently has no idea how to pull off a proper arm lock. Um, when you pull off an Americana, you usually have the person's elbow towards their ribs, so that way you can get the maximum amount of torque on their shoulder. Whereas, he brought the elbow right up, and that really confused me. I don't know why that was supposed to why he thought that was effective, or why that was taught. Um, so, it got a lot less leverage than it should have. Um, surprisingly, he still submitted him with it. So, that kind of sucked. Because you want to see good techniques prevail. You want to see that. But, that didn't happen in this fight, sadly. Um, pretty average fight, I guess. It was mostly just annoying to see those poor techniques. The next fight was Orlando V versus uh, Robert Lugarelli. Interesting fight. Um, Robert got him down and had his head and arm. It looked like he was having a hard time breathing, a lot of pressure by Robert. Um, but he got out. And there was a lot of brutal striking, a lot of very hard elbows, a lot of very hard kicks, um, solid knee to the head, it was brutal, it was a great finish, wonderful DKO. Um, next fight was Remco Pardo versus Alberto Serra Leon. I didn't like this fight either. Um, Remco Pardo employed his game plan and he's a jiu-jitsu guy, he had mount basically the entire time. But he didn't do much with it. He had a bunch of Americana attempts, 
They were very weak, very loose, um, and he had a very interesting alternative straight armor. He had he had side control at a few points in time, and put his um, put Alberta's arm between his legs. His bottom leg was right underneath his elbow, and the top leg was roughly at the wrist, trying to hyperextend it that way. That was very interesting, though. Um, but a long fight, very draining. It was a very loose side control. Alberta could move around relatively freely, from, and he was a Remco was a jiu-jitsu guy. You'd think he would have better control than that. He was supposed to be a very good jiu-jitsu guy, but apparently not. Um, but he submitted him anyway. Remco submitted him anyway with a uh, pretty weak, uh, what looked like an Ezekiel choke from the mount. I think um, it wasn't that good of a choke, but Albert just knew he wasn't going to get out of there. Knew there wasn't much heat that he could do, so he just wanted to, to have, see if he could get out of there. Um, Jason DeLucia versus Scott Baker. Um, it was a very fun fight, actually. I found this surprisingly enjoyable to watch. Jason had a very good game plan and very good sweeps. He basically pulled guard and then swept Scott right off the bat. And that was very smart. Uh, and very well executed. Um, a lot of decent submission attempts, very couple of decent triangles. Um, I believe he also got a decent Americana at one point. I can't remember. I, I remember there was some pretty good submissions that I really enjoyed. Um, eventually, finished Scott Baker with a mounted triangle and punches from the top. So that was really enjoyable to watch. Um, good fight. And the last fight for the preliminary bouts was Wes Gracie versus Minoki Ichihara. This was hyped was this fight was very hyped because everyone thought this could have been the finals. There was a lot of hype around Minoki from I believe he's from Japan. Um, but in terms of what could have been and all the hype around it, it was a bit of a flop. I mean the fight was enjoyable, but with all the hype around Minoki Ichihara. You would expect something a little bit competitive, but it was completely one-sided from Hoist Gracie. Um, very dominant mount. He had no problem taking him down and mounting him. And then just so many brutal, brutal uh, shots to the body. Um, he was just waiting for Minoki to give something up. He wanted to choke him. And eventually... He went for an arm, or at least fake going for an arm. The commentators thought he got an arm bar, but I believe they were wrong. I think he got a a collar choke, because if you look closely, you see him wrap his arm around Minoki and grab his gi, and he p leans back with it and pull and still holds onto his gi, and Minoki taps long before um, his arm is fully extended, so it doesn't look like he got a proper arm bar. His arm's not extended, but you see him grab the Minoki's gi, so I believe he got a collar choke. Um, obviously a very dominant display by Hoist Racy, very good fight. Um, not anything special though. Anyways, that's full of the preliminary bouts. I don't have a lot to say about them. They were pretty short, or there wasn't a lot going on. It wasn't crazy technical. Um, but for the quarterfinals, will be part two. Semifinals and finals, you'll see in part three. And the overview will be in part four. Stay tuned.